Opening day is amazing. It's fun because everyone's so excited. It's a fresh season, it's a fresh start, and it's just special to be a part of that. You know, you can't sleep the night before. You're anxious, you're excited. Everybody's gonna be watching, you know, once you get out there on the field, national anthem, fly over. It's just um, an incredible feeling. The excitement uh, that everyone has geared up in spring training towards a new season is, uh, it's always a blast. You're hoping for the first game to begin, and, and once it all settles in, you're, you're ready to take it on. No matter how many times you've done it, you still get a little bit of those, those butterflies and, and excitement of, of starting off new and fresh and, and having everything ahead of you. It's the start of a new year. Anything can happen. You still get the jitters, you know, you're, you're excited to play, but it's, it's, it's something special, you know. Both the teams are chomping at the bit to play. It's, it's, it's awesome. You know, opening day is baseball's holiday, so to speak. You know, every team's kind of in the same boat. Everybody's trying to, to work towards that same goal. It's definitely one of the more exciting days of the year. But Don Trello, the Astros is the most complete team, do you think? I believe so. They have power, they have speed, they have athleticism, they have depth and they have camaraderie, especially in the core group. It reminds me a lot of when the Kansas City Royals had their run. They made their stadium believe, and then they made the nation believe by their play. But again, they, they picked up where they left off. They like to hit the long ball as they do. They produce runs, and they get a lot of strikeouts because everybody in that rotation can spin it up there. I just think they're off the charts with talent. It's just winning the World Series last year. There's going to be a letdown sooner or later in this season. Don't wish that. I, no, I'm not wishing anything. I think this team will be back in there, but I think they might fall a little short this year just because of the long, long season. Guys got paid this offseason. I mean, it's they was all happening right living, now. They, they are to hunt it. It's going to be a long season. Not a, I mean, not a long season with their talent, but everyone is gunning for the Houston Astros this year. It makes it tough in, in the major leagues. Not too many repeat performers since the Toronto Blue Jays. It's a tough thing. Excuse me. The New York Yankees did it. Yankees, right. But it's, it's a tough thing to do at the major league level right but now. But it's interesting because you bring that up, right? And you said this all last year from the beginning. You were right about the Cubs, even though they got to the LCS, which was pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Theo Epstein said in an interview, yeah, there, were, there was a hang. There was just something that was missing. It was hard to kind of get there. What is going to be the hardest thing for these Astros, Frank? Bullpen. I think the bullpen, we, we saw in the World Series that they scrambled a little bit. I think they're still in the situation to scramble a little bit in that bullpen. Their starters are lights out. They're going to have to pitch deep in the ball games every day. So... It could be that season that they go deep into the season, they burn out. I think their offense will take pressure with that, off that, but I think in the postseason that will be exposed about the bullpen, how they will match that up. Mm -hmm. But I think during the regular season, youth brings excitement. I think they'll be fine. And I think they're just young and dumb enough to not realize <laughs> what, they're, what, right. they're, what they're experiencing right now. So they have the talent. They have the know-how, I think. And it's just hitting the ground running and no one get hurt. I think the only people that can beat them is themselves with injury. But this lineup is deep right now, so I like them going back to the World the Series. The one small difference is that when the Cubs won, it was obviously history, and they were still, you know, the best team. Everyone, all, all, the, all the talk all offseason is the Yankees and Red Sox. Right. right. So the Astros are like, hey, hang on a second. We're they the even ones. said it. We're the <laughs> Verlanders. Hey, it's wait coming a through Papa Dose, baby. Yeah, exactly. It's coming through Papa so, uh, Dose. I like we'll that gumbo down there, Off to a good start, 1-0. Oh. Shohei Otani. <laughs> we're trying to have a good time I, in the Bay Cave. Listen, right? we, we're back. Oh, we're trying to have a we're good time. We're coming back with my guys. We're back on MLB Whip Around. So um, Shohei Otani. Look, it's one game. It's really fun, I think. The fact that this guy's going to try and do both. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. So Frankie had one base hit. Everyone was kind of a ground ball the right side. What do you think about Otani? Is he going to make it here? I think it's a comfort level. I mean, people are so hard on this kid in spring training. 23 years old, coming, you know, the comfort, leaving the comfort of Japan at 23 years old, coming to the United States, jumping into Major League spring training. This is the best of the best in Major League Baseball. Give him some time to get comfortable. He's above average pitcher. He's above average hitter. I see something special with him. I think it's just going to take some time. He's got to get used to the ballparks. He's got to get used to the pitching. Uh, I, I would back up off the pressure on this young man and let him be who he is. And I think you're going to see something special with him over the next couple of years. Mm. I just want to see him a little bit more aggressive, especially in the box. Now, you're concerned because he had a 27 ERA in spring training and gave up nine hits in just two and a two-third innings. So right. that's a little concerning on the mound. So we'll see about that. But at the plate, he was four for 32 with four singles and 10 strikeouts. Now, uh, I'm not you, Big Hurt, but 10 strikeouts and 32 at-bats is concerning. I got something he to add to that, he, he looked overmatched. And well, that's I'm going to say is, about that. this kid's 23. They put him as a DH. He's a right fielder in Japan. Mm -hmm. I think they need a little normalcy with him. Throw him out there, get him comfortable again playing a little outfield. This guy is a special right. player. They got to let him be him and, and with the normalcy. If not, 23 DH is no good. Now you became yeah, more, more, more and more of a DH as you got yes. better in your career, your ankles, things like that. How hard was that for you, a veteran? Extremely hard. I lost 30 points off my bad average DH. Oh, so you batted 300 instead of 330. Well, I was 330 right. as a first baseman, but 
three hundred as a as a DH, yes, yeah. <laughs> or less. <laughs> the Hall of Fame over here. Oh, yeah, that was very difficult. You. I hit three hundred. Back off expectations no, with this guy. No, but it's a good point. Within it's the next couple point. years, you're going to see him grow up in the major league and be something special. Watch out. Twenty three. It's interesting. I, I mean, I think it's fun for the game. I got a list here. And you know I love hitting. I'm a pitcher. Ichiro, 27 when he came I, I, over. I loved it. Matsui, loved it. 28 when he came over. Nomo, 26. Dice K, 26. You Darvish was the youngest at 25. Wow. We saw him struggle a little bit, but we saw him put it together, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Give wow. the guy some time. Otani pitches on Sunday on the mound. There we go. Otani pitches on Sunday.